Later. Bye. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining uh, Quiz for NHS where we get legends of University Challenge like yourselves supporting our NHS campaign. So, um, introduce yourselves. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Jason Golfinos. I was the captain of the uh, Darwin uh, University Challenge team and I forget what year the season is and the, the <laughs> Darwin team says hello, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm slightly questioning uh, calling me a legend, but uh, I... Well, at Cambridge, I was uh, uh, doing an MPhil in Asian and Middle Eastern studies. I was particularly working uh, with political theory from the Islamic world in sort of the 1600s through 1800s, which is a very understudied period for that. Uh, and yeah, now I, I've started law school in the U.S., which is you know separate graduate school in the U.S., and I've sort of just started with that. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be able to go into sort of some fields, you know, helping with legal access you know, uh, and that sort of thing. And yeah, that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> I'm Freddie Leo. I captained the St. Edmund Hall team uh, in the 2019 season of University Challenge. I was working on a BA in history at the time, which I've since completed. And next year, I'm going to be starting a master's in modern European history. Um, thank you for your introductions, guys. So many contestants would have grown up watching University Challenge uh, during their childhood years. But I understand both of you grew up abroad um, for high school, Jason in the States and Freddie in Germany. So did you know much about University Challenge uh, growing up um, or how did you get into quizzing in the first place? So maybe Freddie, you can kick off here. So I sort of knew about it because my father, who's American, but did his undergraduate in the UK, actually went on one of the very first series of University Challenge in 1969. Um, so he, and it used to be a sort of story to tell us when we were too young to really understand the program and we were like, yeah, dad. Uh. Um, but but I, do, I remember he had like a very difficult University Challenge quiz book and he used to scare friends with it and stuff like that because all the questions were impossible. But then, you know, as education advanced um, and I got closer to studying in the UK, I did start watching the program and from that point sort of decided, ah, oh, I want to be on this. Yeah, um, I had not heard of it at all. Um, but it's it's actually, uh, I'm glad Freddie brought up his dad because my dad is, is very much involved in how I got into quizzing in general. That this was, you know, I yeah, this was just sort of the way we interacted a little bit, sort of the way he would like try to, you know, let's see if we can get Jason to get into school and, you know, it would be like sort of quizzing each other in sorts of ways. And, and boy, did he pull it off. Uh, but, uh, you know, I really grew up on Jeopardy, you know, sort of the American program. It is it is both a an ironclad ritual and running joke in, in my house that uh, my dad and I will kick my sisters and mom off the TV uh, <laughs> whenever Jeopardy comes on. Um, so, yeah, that's really how I, how I got into sort of quizzing in general. Uh, and... I was sort of informed of University Challenge sort of in college by some friends of mine I, I quizzed with who were from the UK. And sort of when they heard, you know, uh, you know, oh, you're going to be doing uh, some graduate work in the UK, you should go on University Challenge. I was like, okay, that, that could amuse people. And apparently it did, so mission accomplished. <laughs> Absolutely. So like one of the things that I found so impressive and the public did was that not just the level of your knowledge, but the speed of your recall. How, how did you develop that? during your time at college and in preparation for the series? So I would say it's part of University Challenge's recall speed, but part of it is if you look at the questions, they're actually kind of structured like those Russian dolls. Um, a lot of people think of University Challenge as sort of, you know, who was president in 1969, but actually it's much more, the questions tend to have sort of three or four parts. And so what you can do if you watch the show often enough is you can kind of decode how the questions are structured. So you can, like the first few words Paxman gives to you, you can start wondering, why are we being put in this place? Why is he giving us this information? And I think once you start thinking about questions that way, rather than just binary, do you know this, do you not? It's easier to figure out where the question is going. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll preface this by saying one of my favorite tweets that came out was a, a uh, sort of tweet saying you know, that I was typical Oxbridge sportsmanship bringing in American graduate ringers. Um, and I bring, the, bring this up because that's more accurate than I think the person who, who tweeted that knew. Uh, because the thing about uh, in the U.S., 
at the high school and collegiate level, there is like buzzer quizzing competitions, um, like very close to how university challenge works. And I did that all four years of high school, all four years of undergrad. One of the ways I learned of university challenge was from some people, you know, who have on Oxford teams for this sort of buzzer quizzing that came over to the US for some competitions and, and mentioned it. So it's, I've just had a lot of experience just sort of, you know, translating, you know, sort of, that's what I heard to finger press button um, in a way that, that most other people on the show just haven't had nearly as much practice with uh, as I have. But like, as, as Freddie said, it's, it's that when you're hearing the question, you're not just thinking, oh, do I know what's going on? Is you're also trying to figure out what's being asked. Mm -hmm. And the question sort of pigeonhole in ways that if you know what you're looking for in that respect, you can not only, you know, wait for what's sometimes called, we call it the pronoun for some reason, you know, when they actually drop what president said, you know, where they actually make it very clear what they're looking for. Yeah. So you can, the, as they're asking it, because you know that's what you have to wait for, otherwise it's taking a risk. As, they're, as Jeremy is reading the question, I'm setting up, well, all of the possible answers this could be. You know, it's like, let's say this is a question about something involving, you know, I'm going to use German history because Freddie's here. Sorry, it was mm -hmm. on my mind. You know, it's like, well, okay, given what they're talking about, the answer to this could be Chancellor Bismarck. It could be Prussia. It could be the culture comp. It could be any of these realm of things. So I'm sitting there sort of having all of those in my head ahead of time waiting for when uh, Paxman actually makes it clear what they're asking. Mm. Uh, and then so sort of because I'm setting myself up for that, you know, I... Like I, I'm sort of the reaction time is just much faster because it's because it's like I'm not waiting for information. I'm waiting for like just a very easy signal that I can just go go you know sort of this is what you need. Boom. The trigger yeah. point. I got that. Yeah. Actually, you're talking about uh, tweets and ahead of your epic semi-final class, which we'll talk about later. I thought there were some equally epic memes on Twitter, and my favorite was. Uh, in the style of Elm Street versus Friday the 13th, uh, Freddy versus Jason. Like, how did you react to the, the memes and generally the public reaction to both of you throughout the series? Um, uh, shall I go? Um, sure. It's, I love that one in particular. Um, and it, it, this was uh, sort of uh, some people like at Oxford and Cambridge who created that one, actually. And I, I forget who exactly was the author of it, but it was... I mean, that was, that was a fantastic one. But in, like, in general, like, my favorite thing about the reaction, in, like, to me in particular, was, was frankly the number of people who, said, who, who, who felt that, you know, I was quite annoying. Um, and I love that because uh, I endorsed that conclusion 100%. Uh, it's just that I, I couldn't agree with some of the reasoning behind why people found me annoying. Which enthusiastic. I, you know, I liked it. You're enthusiastic. We should applaud enthusiasm. I... Yeah, don't sure, see but I also, I, like I was, I personally, I am, I annoy myself more than most other people <laughs> in, uh, it's sort of in the world, no, it's sort of very, very funny, whereas it's like, yes, thank you for, for agreeing with my self-perception people on Twitter, um, but I don't think me high-fiving people for doing well is one of the things that makes me annoying. <laughs> no, not at all. It's a, it's, it's you're not annoying funny, high -fiving like, an unusual bit of cognitive dissonance I don't think most people would go through but you know I mean there's like I actually there's like I did go on specifically because I knew I'd be back in the states by the time it aired I'm really not comfortable with being sort of sort of a public figure in any way especially if it's one that's positively regarded because I, I am I'm always scared that that will make me hubristic and so I'm very happy that I didn't get that, you know, there were people who, who did in fact dislike me because that's actually sort of what I want to see. And also I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't have gone on if I thought, you know, that it would actually would have had a significant impact of, on my life, to be honest. If you're like everyone, you're doing it wrong. My only comment to the response to our team, uh, our team's meeting was that I think on the same evening that our, uh, in, our, our match aired, the Notre Dame caught fire so, I don't know. Maybe that was a signal from God. Was that the same day? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I didn't register that at all. Wow. It was like an hour before our match aired, the Notre Dame started burning down. Oh, God. That's, <laughs> that's going to be a question one, one year, like, what decade of the 21st century links the epic Golfinos Leo match? <laughs> the Notre Dame. <laughs> they be like, <laughs> what day of 2019? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, it's like, I remember after my Emmanuel team lost in our 2017 semi final to uh, Wolves and Cambridge and Eric Monkman's team. I was, I was a bit upset. And to console myself, I went on Wikipedia and I checked all the back years of the Universe Challenge and found out that our semi finals actually, with a 30 point gap, was the narrowest semi final uh, since the 2005 series. But actually, your semi final was even closer. So it's actually the closest semi final in 15 years. So I wanted to ask you like two questions wrapped up. So, what was it like to be in that match in particular? And what do you take away from your your time on Universe Challenge. Maybe, Freddie, I'll start on you on this one. Well, I'd say the best way of describing our match is you go on a roller coaster ride. That's 30 minutes. Yeah. And then, like, two minutes into the roller coaster ride, you, real, you realize all your security apparatus, your belt and stuff like that, are missing. <laughs> you just have to hang on for dear life. That's the way I would put it. Very, very exciting, very, very nervous. Um, and frankly, I think, you know, it was a damn close run thing, and we were very, very lucky. Um, as for what I would take away from the match, well, first of all, um, here is <laughs> the, the transparent plaque from, from the team. Um, and I'd also say, I mean, I, I mentioned the word team. I think that, you know, really having a good time with your teammates and also the people you uh, draw against, um, all the other people, that's what makes it a worthwhile experience. Uh, you know, you, so much of it is luck. You can't really control whether you win or lose beyond a certain level. But what you are in control is whether you have a fun time, whether you're nice to everybody else, whether everybody else is nice to you, and whether everybody gets along, and, and it's just a fun bonding experience that you can make a lot of friends during. I mean, that's what I think is the most important part. Yeah, um, I like sort of the Darwin team w was not expecting to do as well as we did or anywhere close. So we, we were very much sort of going, okay, let's just see how this ride goes. And I mean, and that was, that was one, like, the, our match was one of the most fun sort of quizzing matches I've ever had. It was just, like, Absolutely. a great just back and forth. And it, yeah. it helps that, you know, I, like, I, we bonded with Freddie's team in general tremendously. So it was that, I mean, and also just every, all the teams on our, on our, on our season, I think, got along very well. I, I think we all adore each other. Um, so... You know, when everyone, it, like, like it definitely, sort of, if anyone thinks at any point there was any, like, you know, real rivalry that just didn't apply to anyone on our season at all. Um, but, is, you know, it, that was, like, like was the, the experience was just, you know, that this is, you know, this is how quizzing should look like, frankly. It was like I was just having such a great time. Uh, and, yeah, I was just, that's it. And I just had, I was not, the only thing I was mildly upset about with the result was was that uh, was that we rather than uh, getting Freddie back for the number of Cambridge teams he knocked out, he added one more Cambridge team knocked out. <laughs> Absolutely minor gripe, utterly outweighed by the positives. Fine. Let's keep um, institutions out of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Especially ones that really don't need anyone else defending them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, Oxford and Cambridge, no. Um, so before we do a, a final quick this or that round, um, do you guys have any favorite bits of facts or trivia that you'd like to share with us? I remember, this is kind of a weird story, um, but I remember, I think in 2014, the president of Turkmenistan organized a big sort of horse derby, and then he took part in it himself, even though he wasn't good at riding, and he fell off his horse, and everybody in the stadium was filming him. So then, when the stadium emptied out after the show, he was waiting at the entry and confiscated everybody's phones and cameras, because he was embarrassed about falling off his horse. I think that's probably the most obscure story I know. So, my, my problem is, is that I, I tend to have trouble picking out one, but I'll go with one that was sort of I really learned about in depth actually during my master's degree. Um, I just recommend in general, just for you know sheer, just the sheer insanity of it, looking up a a rebel against the early Abbasid Caliphate by the name of Al Muqanna, uh, who uh, literally means like the veiled one, mm -hmm. and he was just sort of this utterly like out there figure 
who claimed to be the reincarnation of of both God himself and several other sort of previous um uh, you know, sort of revolutionaries. Yeah. And he, he, you have this very interesting sort of, you know, situation where he was famous for, you know, having veiled himself in this g- green veil. And supposedly all you could see out of it was just like his one green, very green eye. And he would say, you know, I have to veil myself because if I took it off, the presence of my holiness would blind everyone and, you know, would you know, melt people a la Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you have in sort of the, pole- we only have, you know, the accounts of him are all from, you know, the counter polemics from yeah. the opposite caliphate that of course won. And their description was, this is what he claimed. Actually what it was, was that this guy was really ugly. <laughs> and it's just, if you read more about him, it, it just gets more insane the more you read about him. It's, it's amazing. And just a really interesting point in sort of the history of the Islamic world where, sort of the presence he makes in terms of the development of how sort of the that part of the world develops post-Islam just as a as a matter of fact rather than as a matter of religion religious doctrine he's just a very interesting figure and one of my my favorites thanks I'm gonna have to get the name and type it out uh, later from you um so thank you for what that chat we're gonna end on five uh uh, or a few quick questions. I'm going to say like, for example, red or yellow, and you're going to have to make an immediate, fairly immediate response. So I'll start with Freddie for the first one. Um, tea or coffee? Coffee. Uh, Jason, cake or biscuits? Cake. Uh, Freddie, trainers or sandals? <sighs> sandals. Jason, jumper or t-shirt? T-shirt. Uh, Freddie, Simpsons or Family Guy? Ooh. Family Guy? I mean, I watched oh, either. Wrong answer. Oh, <laughs> interrupting there. J- Jason, Superman or Batman? I'm going to go with, I like Superman. I like his, his sort of, you know, the aspirational quality Absolutely. of it, even when it can get cloying. I like that. And one for both of you at the same time. Paxman or Bamba Gascoigne? I mean, I've only encountered Paxman. That's the problem. You know, I can't really make this call in a reason... <laughs> I love Paxman, so okay. I'll go with that. But it's, I just, the only thing of Bamber Gascoigne I've even encountered is, is the young ones bit. So <laughs> that doesn't really count. I'll say Bamber Gascoigne just for my dad's sake and to balance the equation. Nice, I like that. Um, thank you guys so much for taking part in Quiz for NHS and look forward to seeing you soon again in the UK. See you soon, Bobby. Bye.